Hello and welcome to a new episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr. This is a podcast for record labels, uh, I hope that's been obvious, where we interview record labels, and it's been going on now for well over three years, and we interview record labels, we also do some industry insider episodes. Today is a great label called Get Better Records. Thank you so much for listening to this. Uh, you could, um, by the way, you can uh, check out Get Better Records at getbetterrecords.com and also on their band camp. They're very easy to find, a great label. Um, this is such a fun interview. I, I think you're going to get a ton out of it. Um, you know, part of this community and part of the ethos of this podcast, which has evolved from not just a podcast about record labels and talking to record labels, but it's evolved into this community uh, and this uh, mission statement to work together to um, evolve and to innovate uh, and to be more creative together as record labels. And so I've put together some resources to help you do that. If you are a record label or are thinking of starting a record label, all of our resources, and there's they're growing, there's tons of them, are at otherrecordlabels.com, including our brand new record label toolkit, and it's always being updated. So go check out otherrecordlabels.com slash toolkit where you can download some resources to help guide you in the process of starting a label or I've heard from tons of labels that have been uh, in existence for years who have found it helpful, just some certain reminders or some things that they've they've opted to do a little bit differently. So otherrecordlabels.com slash toolkit to download that for free. I think you're going to really enjoy today's episode. Okay, so I was reading this article that you did on Ears to Feed just a few months ago. And the opening paragraph, it quotes you as saying, uh, a decade in and you believe the label is just getting started. Now, I find this so encouraging to hear. And I don't know if you are being hyperbolic or facetious, but there's this like... I don't know. I just love that so much. And I, I want you to kind of like expand on it a little bit. There's this quote that that I find like really cool that says, people overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And I think that's like hugely important for people listening to hear you say after 10 years or more that you're just getting started. Can you kind of like elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I... I was being totally serious when I said that. That's awesome. Um, but it's also something to kind of hide behind, right? Because you can be like, oh, yeah, we've been a label for 10 years. Uh, we're not as big as maybe we should have been. But like, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, we're just getting started. Um, That's but, true. But no, no, in all seriousness, <laughs> like, I, I do truly feel like the first like eight or so years or like eight or so years of the label was just me like, I was like so busy doing other things in my life. I like, it wasn't a thing like, like nowadays I like work on the label like all day, every day, pretty mm. much. Like it's all I do and think about. Whereas like, you know, four years ago or something, I maybe thought about it like once a week, once a month, just like, Oh yeah. Like I have this label. Like it, it didn't like kind of, cause now it's like very much like wrapped up in my identity. Oh, right. Uh, even just like from my own, like my own personal identity of how I see myself is like the label. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, you know, part of that was we had, we did a rec, we did a cassette for empath, mm -hmm. uh, that really like put us like on the map in some way. Um, like <laughs> I talk about this sometimes too, like I never even heard about pitchfork until like empath got <laughs> written about pitchfork. Like I just didn't. Yeah. Which Good is like, funny. I, I like, I know I'm like kind of like happy for my younger self for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, so I feel like, you know, when that came out, like maybe 2017, 2018, and I feel like that's when I was like, oh my God, like I maybe like we're on to something. Like I need to like start taking this more serious and like really focus on it and do it right. Um, and yeah. And then ever since then, I just feel like I've been like, I take it more and more serious and not that just because you're taking it serious means something different, but like, um, it took me like, you know, eight years to like really even know what I was doing. And mm. I still feel like I'm learning something new 
with every release, with every artist we work with. Um, like, I just see this as like a, a lifelong educational piece of like how to do things and how to e adapt to like new ways of doing things and just like making sure you always have an open mind about how to like go about uh, releasing music and working with artists. Do you feel like you're getting better at it? Uh, I do. I do feel That's like I'm great. getting better at it. Um, and I think some of that just comes with practice. Um, and like, you know, I have no like industry experience outside of this. Um, as, as like, you know, a lot of people don't, oh, yeah. um, it was very much like learning as I go and like really like learning from other people. And, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel like I know what I'm doing now, but I can always be improving about, you know, everything that we're doing. I think it's interesting that you said, you know, not taking yourself seriously for the, you know, for the first uh, half of, of of the lifespan of the label or something, and I, I really can relate to that, and 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 I've heard other people say that as well, and I don't know what it is. I mean, it, it's almost like we set low expectations of ourselves because, I mean, I'm not speaking for you; I'm speaking for myself, but because like we don't want to fail in a way, but it's almost like we now have set these like self-imposed limitations, you know? And it's like, we all, I mean, I know a lot of labels who start off like just kind of as a pretend label. Like it's like a vanity project. It's like a total like, oh yeah, yeah, it's a label, but really we don't really take it too seriously. I don't know. I've just heard that refrain over and over of labels who after six or seven years are like, Hold on a second. I should take this more seriously. And 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 for me personally, I'm like, man, if I had taken this really seriously, really committed from day one, where would I be today? I don't know. I don't know if you agree with that in any sense or can relate to that. Yeah, I, I don't know that I ever like saw it get better as like a uh, like a pretend label per se. Um, but I did see it as I think I just like was insecure yeah. in myself and being like. I really have no idea what I'm doing, but also like, I didn't care back then. I was just like, <laughs> like the way the label, the way the label started, it was just like, Oh my God. Like I, I was always obsessed with music and with like labels and art and everything. So, you know, like all my like shitty uh, punk bands when I was like 13 years old or 14 years old, or whatever, like I would send our demo to Epitaph as if they would ever write us back. <laughs> and, you know, I was like that kid that was like, uh, sending demos everywhere. Um, and at a certain point, like when I started taking my music more seriously, I was like, well, why don't I just start my own label instead of waiting for other people to like take me seriously? I'm just going to take myself seriously. Um, but that, and that's like kind of how we got started. And like, you know, in the first couple of years, well, I guess like not couple, like eight years, I was just like way more relaxed about it. But I didn't, you know, I took it seriously. It wasn't just like okay. It was, but it was more like a hobby than it was like okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a, fair. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you for a second. You sent? Did you ever hear back from any of those labels you sent demos to? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> um, does it make you more empathetic though now when you receive demos? Uh, it does. So at, at one point, um, my mission was to respond to every demo request we got. Oh, nice. But that quickly changed when people would just send an email to me with no subject line and just like a link. And I'm just like, I'm not going to respond. If you're not taking like, yeah. if you're not going to take this inquiry seriously, 100%. like I'm not going to yeah. respond to you. Like, and you know, like I don't respond to everyone. Um, uh, like I, like I would like to, but it does make me more like empathetic and sympathetic. So like, um, demo submissions you know i have signed a couple of bands off of demo submissions which like Amazing. i know a lot of people a lot of people these days just don't do yeah no i mean i, I actually still hear that quite not quite a bit but it, it, i've heard that a, a few times but yeah i mean a, a lot of labels just can't at this point um and, and there's a trust factor too i think there's it's just much safer to sign someone who's a friend of a friend or referred uh in a you know, in a more official manner. Exactly. Yeah. Like m almost all of our artists started off as friends at some point. Right. I mean, that, that, that shifted a little bit in recent years. Cause I feel like to grow, we couldn't just work with our friends yeah. all the time. Oh, sure. How, however, I feel like 
I have a very like hands-on approach to every release and every artist. So like most of the artists turn into friends by the end of it or like at the beginning of it, you know? Oh uh, yeah. I guess I, I kind of would hope that in some yeah. way. <laughs> um, yeah. Totally. I've been curious. I've actually, even before this, um, I've been curious about the label name get better. I, I have my own interpretation. I'm curious about what the, the origin is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, the real honest truth about it is uh, there is a Lemuria record called Get Better. And when I was thinking of a label name, I looked over at like a poster I had of that record on my wall. And I was like, that's it. And then kind of the joke was, well, if you don't like our record, you can get better records somewhere else. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but then it's kind of like, you know, you know, like when you say a word for so long, it has like kind of like loses its meaning. Yeah, um, I feel like it's kind of like lost its like original meaning to me. But it's also kind of funny because I, um, I'm an acupuncturist as well, and oh, so okay. it's like I like hopefully like help people get better in the clinic. So it's like a funny little thing, but. Yeah. The real answer, like it, it, it means really nothing at this point. And it was just like a Lemuria record that I really liked and saw a poster of on my wall. <laughs> well, I wonder, like, be, I think so many people can have their own personal, it, it becomes a subjective name. It, I, I don't know if you're cool with that, but I just think that's, that. I think that is kind of cool. Yeah. 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 I, no, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Like, I think, like, hopefully us as a label, you know, like, have have a lot of meaning and like so like our name doesn't have to like kind of hint at anything other than like just the name itself i don't know like yeah, yeah. i was yeah didn't give that much thought to it you know in 2009 when i came up with it and um <laughs> i i i do wonder if i had come up with a label now like it would probably be something different you know so but no looking back yeah i i i'm you know the same way like when we we're talking about like kind of not taking things seriously. Like when you name a label, you really, and I try to tell this to like younger labels now, and, and maybe this is a bad thing to taint them, but it's like, think of, you know, don't think on the label name too much, but like there are some implications. Like I'd always want to make sure the dot com is available. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like, or I'm not going to get into legal trouble or like SEO trouble later on in life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys, as you guys got started in two thousand nine. What were things like back then? I mean, uh, like I actually think that was the year that like Bandcamp got started. But what what do you remember about two thousand nine and, and and starting the label? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Bandcamp because that was like the first thing I was going to mention. Um, I believe we did have a label MySpace back oh, in the day. Oh, in two thousand nine. Um, I I want to yeah, say man. we. Did. Uh, I could be, I could just be remembering my old bands having MySpaces, but um, yeah, you could be yeah, right. We, <laughs> I'll have to look it up after. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's probably a mess on that website <laughs> now. Um, but yeah, things are like totally different. You know, streaming didn't exist like it does today. Like mm -hmm. you know, with Spotify and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember one of the first things I did was uh, make a band camp. That was like you know the way to get our music heard. Yeah. Uh, um, and so at the time, uh, I'm from Baltimore, but I went to college in Key, New Hampshire, and I started the label in my first year of college mm. with my roommate, Nick, who, who left the label like a year later. Um, so we, we were pretty much just like releasing like literally like burnt CDs. And if I wanted to be fancy, I would order like CD sticker paper and print them off. <laughs> oh, I remember doing that. And it was so hard to, to align it up and not get a bubble or oh a God, crease. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would like be like, it, like so mad in my room, just like sticking like, <laughs> cause like, you know, I didn't have any money at the time. It was like so expensive to just like print these sticker papers. And that was like us, like, you know, like going all out. Yeah. Until yeah. We found, like, <laughs> It's like cheap website called like M2M or something that made like really really cheap jewel case CDs that broke the minute you opened it. Oh, because um, it was <laughs> expensive to make CDs back then. It was still yeah, it was I difficult. Think, yeah, and I think I think 
Yeah, it was maybe like two dollars per CD or something, which like honestly is is more expensive than it is today. But we were also probably making like a hundred of them at a time. Right, or something. right, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then like <laughs> the 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 way we like funded our first LP was I was like screen printing shirts, and I had my friend at our college hire me, and like kind of like charged them. I, I charged the school like a lot of money to print these shirts, and then just like paid for the first like vinyl release we ever did wow. with that money I got from the school. <laughs> that must have been a daunting investment, like especially when you're young and in college. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, I think it was like, I don't know, like $800 or something. And I was like, well, I've like never spent this kind of money before. You know, I didn't <laughs> yes. never have that money. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was definitely daunting. And like, yeah, like we, yeah, a very very slow slow growth to the label. Uh, what, what, were, was there like uh, labels you were looking up to that you were trying to mimic? Yeah, so I mean, this this reference is is kind of dated now since the owner uh, is pretty awful. But uh, Planet Planet X Records was kind of like what I, what we based the label off of in the sense that it was like, you know, kind of like community oriented and like super DIY, like sure. all the releases were like, like really cheap and affordable. So that like no one could like, could not buy it if they really wanted it. And if they did, or they couldn't, we would just give it to them for free. You know, it, yeah. was, it was, it was about the music, but it was also about the politics and like getting our artists out there. Um, and then like, you know, Epitaph and Fat Records were oh, like huge. Yeah is on yeah. me just like growing up and like that's like all I listen to um I, I've been having a, like a year and a half long back and forth with Aaron from Fat Records um, publicist to try to get a Fat Records episode happening but it's oh, cool. it's been difficult yeah <laughs> I would love to I'd love to yeah yeah totally that'd be great I mean starting a record label in a dorm room I mean it's so cliche I, I but it's I it's awesome though <laughs> yeah and like yeah it, it definitely started like in like my my dorm room with like living with my two roommates one of which who like found founded the label with me yeah um but uh yeah to total cliche but uh that's you know like can't hide from it. Was there a recording studio component to your early days? Did I read that somewhere? Yep, you did. So it, I, I, I think it was like kind of a scam. Like this dude moved to town, like with his wife and I think one of his kids, and like he had a studio called Handsome Grandson, and like oh, that's a weird name. It's like yeah, really weird. And like he was a weird <laughs> dude. His name was Chris. Um. Yeah, and like so, we could like just like walk there from our our campus, and he would like record us. How did it work? Like, yeah, he was like somehow involved. Like, he would record all of our artists, but like just wanted the promotion instead of us to pay him. Oh, the pr promotion exactly. for his studio. I believe that's how it worked. Okay. I, I remember there was like something where he was being really weird about some stuff, and then we ended up just like not talking to him anymore. Yeah. I think he had like some anger issues or something, but and so um, this was like a way for you to record your bands. Yes, yeah. Oh, so that's like that's cool. like where, that's where we all recorded, and it was a really sweet hookup for a while until he started being kind of weird. I think he just like <laughs> it wasn't working for him. Like right. people weren't going to the studio because like oh, right, right, like, right. College band in like Western New Hampshire wasn't like pushing his studio hard enough or something. Oh, right. <laughs> Right. Um, and like, how would you do that? Like from the stage, like this next track was recorded at your local recording. Like it'd be a weird cross promotion. I'm not sure how a band would go about promoting the studio other than the liner notes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, he had his logo like engraved in the fir early versions of all the CDs that we did. Engraved. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I forgot about all of this. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry to bring up some. Some tough pasts here. No, no, no. It was just funny thinking about this now. Because I, I, I actually was cleaning my car out a couple weeks ago and found like one of the first ever CDs I ever released. And his logo was in there. And I was like, oh my God, I like haven't seen this in like 10, 11 years or something. So would you guys record like live off the floor? And like... No. Oh, it really? Was, like, 
it was like fully like tracked and like like multi track recording. Oh. He had like a whole board and everything. It well, was like a yeah. legit setup. No wonder he was probably like a little in over his head. Oh, I, I definitely think so. <laughs> I don't even know how he. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> um, do you find it hard? Let's move on to to kind of like uh, further down the road. Do you find it hard? And, I, and I'm kind of curious about labels who have been around through the changes because we're talking about. Um, you know, starting the label with CDs, and back then, you know, iTunes was pretty much the only digital platform, and, and Bandcamp was absolutely brand new. Um, do you find it hard to adapt as things change and evolve? Like, like, do you feel pressured to do TikTok or or whatever comes next? Um, yes and no. I think like you know, in the early days of the label when all this stuff was coming out, we were such like a slow moving label that like. I didn't even like really think about it too much, but mm. I, I would say like, you know, we definitely like started with distro kid and like had our stuff up on like every platform because we were really just like, why wouldn't we have it up everywhere? Yeah. Um, but as far as like TikTok goes, um, that's a very new thing that we're dealing with right now. Um, cause we just signed two artists that are like, like pretty like popular on TikTok. Oh. Um, with, like an element that we just like, like I listen to, I watch TikTok when I'm like stoned at night, like <laughs> and want to like watch funny videos. Like I'm not on there for like music industry stuff, but I had to like kind of shift my uh, my use of the app to like kind of look at it that way. Right. And um, I actually like just hired someone to like help run the TikTok because I just like don't. Oh, that's deal smart. With it. Yeah. Um, and uh. Even she's like been a little hesitant because like of how TikTok can be with like some people on there and just like trolling and stuff. So oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like very, very slowly rolling into it. Um, but yeah, I like we're like open to like all these new platforms. I think you kind of have to be to I guess some so. degree. Like the only platform we're not on is Amazon, and that's strictly a political decision of like they support ICE and like mm. you know treat their workers horribly. So we just decided to like pull our entire catalog both physically and digitally from them. It's like even written into our like distribution contract wow. um, to not have our stuff go there. Um, which I, I even like email, I was like talking to our rep not that long ago. And I was like, how much is this hurting us? Yeah. And, and he was kind of like, well, right now, like it's really not because of the way that like production delays are and everything like vinyl is selling so hot right now that, people aren't even able to give Amazon what they want because it's already spoken for before it even gets to them. Oh, interesting. Well, that's yeah, good. So, that's great. Yeah, which I, yeah, I thought was really interesting too because, you know, I'd rather have like the smaller indie stores getting their releases than, you know, Amazon. I, but I'm curious. I mean, yeah, and I mean, their digital platform, Amazon Music, like at the time of recording this is a total nothing burger. Like, I mean, it's not... I don't know how people find it or people use it. It's not responsible for, you know, for really any type of revenue that I've ever seen. But I'm I'm questioning, I'm curious about like the profit. I mean, maybe you don't know this because you're not on Amazon, but I was curious about like where, who gets what money or how much money a label would get from Amazon because there's this record, an independent record that came out recently from America and I I saw the vinyl on um, on Amazon for twenty dollars, twenty one dollars, and I was like, I couldn't believe it because it was Amazon Canada, so it would be like free shipping. I'd get it in like a day, and you know, like otherwise um, buying it from America would be like twenty five dollars plus twenty dollars shipping. And so I was like, wow, that's a great deal. But I also hesitated because I'm like, of the twenty one dollars, like how much would that label and the artists be getting from the twenty one dollars? I mean, it, it couldn't be very much at all. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, and I, I I don't know the answer because we don't we don't work with them. Sure. But that's like a pretty low retail for like an Amazon. I yeah, that's I know. I yeah. I, I think that's why I was kind of like tempted by it. Uh, but then I was like, oh, I don't know that artist. Like, and and the artist wouldn't even know if it sells really either too. So it's not even encouraging for them, right? Unless they had like the wholesale set super low or something. Um. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Anyway, the, the so that kind of leads into like the ethos of get better. 
is so distinguished in my mind. Like your values and identity just bleeds through, you know, at least your online presence, as we've been, you know, kind of talking about. Talk to me about why being a label with values and ethics and identity is important, if it is, as opposed to, you know, uh, just a, a neutral company that just slaps a logo on a record. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Um, I, yeah, it's definitely like a loaded question. I, I think for <laughs> me, how I feel about it is, um, you know, if we're going to have like a platform on like social media and like wherever else, like, I think it's like our duty to be talking about issues that are happening, mm. uh, whether they're hard to talk about or not. I think it's like, especially like, you know, I am, I'm a, a white person. Um, and I think like, it's, it's like kind of like, like, like we need to be doing work to like dismantle white supremacy and like, uh, just like combating like cis white hat norms. And I think like through the label, um, I, I just like found like, that's like how, like, like to reach people, but also like, I, I, yeah, I truly feel like it's our duty to be talking mm. about this stuff and like um, sharing information, sharing resources, sharing links, whether like people like click them or not, maybe they'll like see, oh yeah, like there's a war going on in Palestine right now. Like what's up with that? Why does, well, why are people talking about this? And hopefully they'll like, you know, educate from it and like learn about it. Um, Cause I think for me, music has always been political and, um, Sure. And, and like, I kind of wanted to continue on with that. And I feel like, um, that's how I'm most comfortable doing what we do is if we also like have this political element to it. So it doesn't just seem like, I mean, not, not that it doesn't just seem like, but cause it's, it's not just like, we're not like a, obviously like profit matters, but we're not like a profit driven label in the yeah. sense that that's all we think about. Like, yeah. it, we're a business, you know, like a, registered business in Pennsylvania. So like, you know, like we obviously think about that stuff, but like our, the forefront of our minds isn't like, how can we just like make money off of this next release? It's more so like, how do we like, you know, talk about, you know, uh, abolition politics, like all, all of that stuff in a way that like, that would be like, you know, can tie it into our music and like our artists also care about these issues. So it's a really like, I think it's a beautiful combination. Yeah, I agree. All of our, our artists care about that stuff too. And I think maybe that's why some of them wanted to work with us versus like another label. Also, like I, I'm by no means saying that we're perfect because we are like mm. absolutely not. Mm. Like we, I like am always like trying to like learn and grow as an individual and like, I'm like open to like criticism all the time. Um, but I, I, I do think at the end of the day, like having the social media platform that we have and the reach that we may have, like it's important to like shed light on like a lot of issues. I think I totally agree. I think it's imperative. I, I think, and, and not, I, I think I hadn't thought about it as a duty. I, and I think that is really, that's incredible. But I mean, even just, if you want to attract people, for lack of a better word, you have to a- establish what you stand for and, and who you are. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's great. I totally agree. And, and I think also, like a lot of our artists feel comfortable, like with us, and like we've like really, I feel like established a strong sense of like label camaraderie and community because we're all like we all are in communication with each other. Like, um, uh, this person Koji, who like, uh, is an incredible artist. Um, and we did a record for, uh, back in, um, March just recently joined, like started helping with the label and they like put together this like label wide zoom conferences where we just talk about, uh, like how do we feel about shows coming back? Like what are our needs around shows and what are our needs around like, feeling safe to tour again. Um, and it was just like this like beautiful like moment of like, you know, the Zooms are like each like almost like four hours long of just like <laughs> all of us just like talking with each other. And it was just like the most incredible thing to experience, especially when we're in a pandemic and like I don't see my friends. It was like, you know, really like strong community building and getting everyone to like 
interact with each other to me is like just as important as well. Like, you know, we want all of our artists to feel loved and cared for by us, but also by each other. I think this is so incredible because the, and it's often overlooked the impact of the, the relationship with the artists and the label and completely setting aside the music fan for a second and just thinking about how beneficial for the individual artist it is to have an ally and to have someone who can support them and you know not even not even as like in a, a hierarchy like someone who's an equal to them who can you know support them and and promote their music and whatever i just think that's so it's often overlooked about how valuable when a record label, a lot of people think record labels serve music fans and, and release records and curate all for the music fan and for the music industry. But there's something going on. It sounds like with you guys where there's something going on between the artist and the label that even if you didn't release music, something good is still happening. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely what we strive for. Um, You know, I have like, you know, group te- text threads with every artist on the label. Like, I we have each other's phone numbers. We're talking, we're texting, we're calling. We're like, you know, especially like around release time, we're like always in communicate, like direct communication with each other, whether they have a manager or not. I think it's really important to like have that FaceTime with your artist so that you're really gauging how they're feeling, and it's not just like okay, well, I'm going to talk to your manager who's going to talk to you. Right. You know, like, even if they have managers, like, we're still, like, talking directly to the artists, which I feel is really important. Oh, totally. What What about the, the uh, you know, kind of communicating this ethos and this identity to the, to the music fans? I mean, how, um, what do you hope to uh, deliver to the music fans? It's got to be something more than, than just, the music, right? Obviously, like there is, is there a way to kind of communicate that empathy and that safety to to fans of your label as well? Yeah, I, and I think that's kind of what we do with our social media. Is like when we're like, you know, I, I'd say like half of our posts are like um, music based, and half of our posts are like <laughs> ethos based. And I, I think like people who follow us on the internet kind of see that and like hope that they, I hope that they like some people like gain from that and like feel empowered by like what we're talking about. Um, Because yeah, like we aren't just a label that just releases music and it's like, okay, release, 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 release. It's like, okay, let's talk about this music thing for a minute. Now let's also talk about what's happening in Palestine or like Black Lives Matter or like anything that's going on that we like want to talk about because like again like I feel like like we we should we should be like having these conversations no matter how hard they can be I I just had this theory tell me if this is totally crazy but like you remember when that Dixie Chicks thing happened when when people were like just like shut up and saying don't don't talk about politics. Do you remember that? Like in the two thousands when yeah. everyone was like burning her, their CDs and stuff. I, I was, I'm thinking like now and I'm like, I wonder if that like spawned an entire generation who actually wanted their artists and their record labels to be political and to have a voice to, outside of music. I actually wonder if like all those people burning CDs had like the opposite effect 20 years later. I don't know. Huh, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. Um, it certainly yeah, is I, for me. I, I just think what I, I think back of, there's still people on Twitter who will say today, like, I don't want my artist to be political. It, like if somebody, if an artist I follow speaks out against Trump, then somebody will likely in the in the comments below say, you know, just stick to the music, don't get political. And, I, and I'm just like, no, do the opposite. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see that too. Um, I'm, try, I'm sure someone not in recent years, no one's ever told us to shut up and just stick to music because I think, I, I think hopefully if they, if they think that they probably have unfollowed us a while ago or don't yeah, care about <laughs> Um, but no, but no, you're right. Like people do definitely think that way. And I think that way of thinking is just like, kind of t- like, just like dangerous to like expect an artist to only think about music. I think that's just weird and 
just like perpetuates all the things that we are trying to like dismantle is like why wouldn't you want your artists like to talk about what's going on and like yeah whether it's about trump or not like I don't know. I, I guess probably the person maybe just disagreed with the, what they were saying and just like didn't want to like, <laughs> true. know their politics or something. Yeah. Oh, that's. I mean, yeah. And I'm not. I'm not giving any uh, sort of voice to that type of comment or who may have yeah. just probably been a bot anyway. But uh, yeah, it's right. just. It, yeah. It, <laughs> I don't know. It's just. It's to me. I think it's like when I look at the labels in our community, I would say the you know the majority of the labels and new labels and newer labels uh, are all establishing themselves with some sort of identity um and and sometimes it's a really explicit um social cause and sometimes it's just um something it's, it's something a little bit more implicit more embedded but i i think it's great that every label is coming out and saying we have a mission statement that's more than just release a record and get it heard. Yeah, I've I've actually like uh <laughs> I've like reached out to some labels who I felt like weren't saying enough and I was like why aren't you talking about this thing that's happening? Mm. And kind of like some of their responses were just like, well, like we feel that we're here to like serve our artists and like just give voices to our artists instead of like having like some like other like political agenda. And to that, I just want to say like, you can do both. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you don't have to just post one Instagram post a day or one tweet a day. Like, you know, like, there's no like limit to how many you can post. Obviously like posting like, you know, 20 things for a day, people are probably going to get annoyed and unfollow you and like, <sighs> what does that serve? But sure. like, I, I like, I think like you can, you can definitely do both and you can like have an album announcement at 10 AM and post something that you feel, uh, whether it's like a protest happening in your city, like you can, you can do them simultaneously and pretty, pretty smooth, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I, yeah, I just like, Again, like we're not perfect. I don't. I don't think that we are. I just like wonder what other labels who, or not just labels, artists in general who like are more quiet and silent on issues, why they are, and like you know, it's like silence is violence. So it's like why, why, why play into that? Why not just like be vocal about how you feel? Because I feel like you know, the more vocal you are, um, it kind of gets it gets easier being vocal the more vocal you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I we didn't just one day like be like, you know, going on political tangents or whatever. Like it was like, it, it, it is, it is like a thing that maybe like you have to build up to or something. Um, if that makes sense. No. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm, I find it really difficult I, to be honest with you. Like I, I find it hard to be vocal. Um, not because I, I'm not passionate, but just because I'm just nervous. I'm just, Maybe, maybe it's just shy, or or I don't know what it is. But I I kind of um, I do have that internal um, debate, though, that it's like not saying anything is is definitely saying something. And 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 I mean, I actually felt really compelled in the last couple of days here in Canada. We've had some things going on, and and I just kind of was like, you know, now and this is like a, a topic I'm a little bit more educated on, and I'm like. You know, now is a good time to to say something, and I I don't know. I still I still just chickened out to be honest with you. I do find it yeah. really, yeah, yeah. No, totally, totally. And like, I think you know, a lot of people feel that way. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely you know. I I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to just sound like we're like the only one doing. No, I appreciate to- you. So I appreciate you talking about this, I, and I don't think you're you're not coming off as saying that you have it all figured out. I, I appreciate you yeah. talking about this. We absolutely do not have it figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Going to go on record and say that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, here's something I read in an interview with you. Our <laughs> I love this. Our overarching creed for the label is "Don't be a jerk." I love I love that. It's so simple, but it's surprisingly yeah. not easy. Yeah, no, totally, totally. I, I think like, you know, we've had like, 
you know, artists on our label that have been on bigger labels, been on major labels, and just like, I guess maybe you're talking about just personal stuff, but just like be nice to your artists and like treat them fairly mm. and like not even just fairly, just like treat them well. Yeah. Um, and I think like, you know, I, I don't want to work with someone who's like mean or like intimidating in some weird way. Like, I, I just like want everyone to have um, a positive experience with us or other artists on the label. So like, you know, and we do a fair amount of research on our artists before we sign them and make sure that like, there's nothing weird or like bad that we should know. And like that has happened, you know, where mm. like we find out someone we've had to like kick bands off the label before because of finding wow. out stuff afterwards sure. or whatever, you know? Um, but yeah, don't be a jerk is uh, <laughs> a great thing to live by. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, there's, there's people who know me who would probably put me in that category, but it's definitely something like, it's something that I, f- I feel like makes a ton of sense. And I don't, I don't know if I've always lived by it, but, and I'm, sh- I'm sure people <laughs> would say I haven't, but like, it, it's just, um, I don't know. It just, it's so much easier to, to work with people when everyone just has like reciprocity in mind. Everyone just has like, how how are you going to benefit from this and and how am i going to benefit from this and like how can we you know how can we both how can everyone benefit from this i feel like that's just way more productive than an artist or a label coming in thinking only of themselves yeah and i i think like um you know like we're 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 like, you know a pretty small label like and we have never signed an artist for more than one record at a time hmm. and i think like because of that, you know, not that we like are being fake with anyone, but like, cause we're, I, I like to think we're genuine with everybody, but like, you know, no one's locked into a second album. So like, we have to like really show up and be ourselves and like do our hardest work and like yeah. really be our best versions of ourselves all the time in hopes that like, you know, we can really grow this relationship, whether it's like, you know, for like two records after or one record after, you know, whatever. Like, I, I think like, just like connecting with our artists and being like treating everyone like with the utmost respect is like the number one thing other yeah. than being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great, and that's a totally great um, kind of like meter stick. It actually, uh, uh, that actually um, leads into my next question about how you measure success. And I, I think what you just talked about is incredible of, of the one album deal really puts so much pressure on yourself and, and, if I were you, like having a label, having an artist stick with you for more than one album is would be a huge accomplishment, um, and obviously a sign that you're doing something right. But how do you know if if Get Better is on the right track or doing the right thing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, for me, I, I measure success based on like number one, like is the artist happy with the release when it came out? Oh. Are they happy? With- the rollout are they happy with like um uh like not not even just like reviews but are they happy with like the perception that it got like but ultimately like how do you feel as an artist now that your record is out like are you like just like relieved it's all over or are you like genuinely like excited about it um which i mean like again like of course like we have to think about like money and like breaking even or like you know, making money off that to survive as a label, but that's not like the first thing we're thinking about. It's like, how is everyone feeling about this? Because, you know, for me growing up, like, you know, music was about like, uh, the experience of it, you know, like, and I, I want everyone to have a, a good experience and like, sure. It's amazing if we sell a ton of copies of the record and can pay the artists, like, a bunch of royalty, but that isn't like the number one thing that we're trying to do. Mm. Although like that definitely like helps the album feel successful. Yeah. Um, but that's like for us, like more of like a material thing rather than like, how is everyone feeling about what just, <laughs> what just happened? You know? <laughs> yeah. Cause it often feels like you're like, on some like weird cloud when you're like in a campaign mode. It's like all you think about. So like when you're done and out of it, like, how are you feeling? Like, does that feel good? Yeah. That's great. I remember I I did an EP a couple of years ago with an artist and I love I love this artist one of my favorite artists I was so blessed to be able to work with them and and the EP came out and I don't think we got 
any press. We didn't get any playlists. I mean, we got nothing, absolutely nothing. Almost to the point where, like, we were both looking at each other, like, are we crazy? Like, I thought there was, <laughs> like, but to, to this date, it's still like one of my favorite EPs, one of my favorite releases. And at the end, like, he was so thrilled. Like, he just wanted to have the record out and was totally unbothered by uh, the lack of, of public response to it. And, you know, so that's a success. And I, I totally, I totally agree with you. And you just kind of put that, that experience that I had into words that, you know, we were both proud, uh, of how, of how everything happened. And, uh, that is a great way for labels to measure success. Yeah. And especially, you know, in like, uh, 2021, like press has just been like, harder than it's ever been before so like i feel like if you're measuring success off of press it's just like an unhealthy way to look at it Mm. um especially like in this climate with like the abundance of releases and new artists and old artists like getting back together like everything um you know like we have some releases that get very little press but the band exactly like is like so excited about everything that's going on and like all their friends love it like they ha- got some new fans, like, and that's a success, you know. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, su- su- success can look different, you know. It can it can look like that, or it can look like selling like thousands of copies of a record, you know. It just like it just kind of depends. But ultimately, like, I want everyone to like uh, be happy with with like on release day, you know, and feel like they everyone like did their best job and like is happy the record is out, you know. Uh, that's interesting. You said something about 2021 and, and press. Why do you think things are so um, difficult with press? And I'm, I'm trying to put my finger on it too because I'm, I'm seeing that as well. And I feel like playlists are getting further and further out of people's reach, and and you know social media is just getting totally out of control. And pressing plants are are nuts. And it's like I I feel right now like in 2021 I have no grasp on on anything. I have like no control on on what happens when I release music. Like, what do you think is going on? Yeah, uh, I think I think there's just like, um, and it's not a bad thing. I think there's just like a um, an abundance of everything right now with music. Like everyone, I feel like at least like last year, a lot of people like held off their release schedule and hopes that touring would come back in a couple of months. Which obviously, it's you know been almost a year and a half now, and, mm. and it's not really back. But so I think like everyone is just like going kind of wild with releases. And like, I think maybe press is just being more selective about what they can cover. Uh, I remember talking to a publicist maybe like a year ago and he was like, Oh yeah. Like everyone's just buying like all my emails. It's like nothing. It's like nothing like this has like never happened before. Uh. And I feel like that was because everyone was at home at their computers, like bored out of their minds with nothing to do (laughs) other than listen to music. And I feel like, now maybe that people are back in the flow of things like it's not this exciting thing anymore to just be like listening to new music all day yeah. there's also just so much of it you yeah. know there's like new new labels popping up all the time new bands popping up all the time it's just impossible to like get coverage for everybody you know and we're we're definitely being hit and affected by that pretty hard right now i i have been kind of coping with it mentally in just thinking about for my own release I've been working on recently and I've been just thinking, you know what? The best part of that, I think the best part of of making a record and releasing a record is the songwriting process and, and hearing it on record and maybe listening to the test pressing. And I'm just trying to embrace those moments and forget about how it's received, forget about critics, forget about playlists, and just trying to embrace that you know, intimacy that I had making the music in the beginning and 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 treating that as the reward as opposed to, I used to think that release day and what happens on release day was the reward. So that's my coping mechanism. <laughs> yeah, and it's also just like kind of like going back to your roots of like, why, why, am I, why did I start playing music in the first place? You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. for most of us to like be famous and get that like, you know, Rolling Stone or Pitchfork review. It's because like we just like loved to do it, you know, and it was like helped us feel good, whether it was like mentally, physically or whatever, you know? And I think like that's like kinda of, yeah, exactly like we're talking about like success. It's like 
Are you feeling good about it? Great. It's a success, you know? Yeah. Pitchfork didn't cover it. All right. Well, whatever, you know, like yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to remind ourselves that when things don't happen, like a pitchfork review doesn't happen, it doesn't necessarily mean something. It doesn't mean that they listened and thought it sucked. Uh, it, it, oh, yeah. It just could mean that it, it got lost or it wasn't, it didn't get lucky. It didn't hit that lucky slot in somebody's inbox. Also, like, you know, some of our best selling releases, Pitchfork never covered, you know, never Crazy. got a review, never got news. The Pitchfork has never covered the band before, you know? So right. it's like, that really doesn't even translate to album sales if that's what you're after. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. That's a great point. I was looking on your website on Bandcamp today, and I was looking at like a record that had sold out like four four hundred copies or five hundred copies, and I was thinking, boy, that's just such a that's such a huge accomplishment. I mean, to me, like there's like this like um, inflation of like of like quantities sold. Where when I see a band sell out of their first pressing, that's like the equivalent of a million records in the nineties. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just oh, like. Yeah. I just looked at that. I was like, that is amazing. That that band must just love it. Yeah, no, it's it's and I'm not gonna lie, you know, it's a really great feeling when that does happen, you know. Um, because also that's how we can can continue doing what we do is you know, we have to sell records. Like that is like mm -hmm. a thing that we definitely think about. Um, you know, just to like keep funding other future releases that are coming out and everything. But um yeah. Totally. Speaking of um, when we're talking about generating revenue and whatnot, uh, I love seeing labels that do more than just release records. And I think that your label kind of falls into that category, whether it's like festivals or events or, or you know, non artist merch uh, or even just compilations. That's something I see your label doing. Uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense. Do you have like a kind of a strategy behind like doing more than just music? Uh, the more you get to know me, the, the more you realize that there is no strategy. It's just, uh, a lot of, a lot of impulse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's maybe a strategy uh, in itself. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it is. <laughs> um, yeah. Like the festival is something that like we did, like, I think you have the first or second year we started the label and has been like a really fun thing, um, to do and like get people together that are both on a label and not again, like community building mm -hmm. um and we're actually planning uh something for 2022 like i think a couple of like pop-up get better fest throughout the country and i think actually one in, in toronto as well oh nice uh, so it'd be like a weekend of like shows in like la philly new york toronto like chicago or or whatever we haven't yeah. fully flushed it out yet um but I feel like that's also just a good way to get our artists exposed and people exposed to the label. That's not just, you know, like releasing a new record. Like there's other ways to get heard and seen by people. That's not just releasing music. Um, and like, we're, we're very like lucky that people buy like label merch. Like we always have like label mugs and like, yeah, whatever like, people, people really do like it. And I think that's, I really, we're very like fortunate to have that support in that way. Um, well, sorry and, if I can interrupt you for a second. I just think that yeah. goes back to what we were talking about when a label has an identity and when a label stands for something. Yeah. That really, that's when merch, <clears throat> excuse me, really makes sense because sometimes I see labels coming out with merch and I don't really get on their website like, why somebody would want to wear that, you know, whereas as opposed to somebody saying, I'm wearing this and there's obviously a meaning behind why I'm wearing this. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think uh, I was listening to this, maybe it was like a sub pop podcast or something like a while ago. And someone was like, oh, yeah, like I didn't even realize sub pop was a label. I thought it was like a hat company. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> not, not that we're like that, but like, yeah, I think like. Yeah, when people like want to buy label merch, it's because they like enjoy the label. And it's like, yeah, exactly. It has like an identity to it in, in itself mm -hmm. and like a meaning behind it. Yeah. Even if they don't know what get better means, they, <laughs> they have their own meaning. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, thank you so much for doing this. This has been so much fun to chat with you. 
Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, like I said off there, I've been a huge fan of the podcast for a while and using your uh, record mock-up. So, uh, <laughs> I, I'm so pleased to hear that. Thank you to all of you for listening to this interview. I hope that you got something from it. I hope you were inspired and encouraged. Maybe there's a little nugget in there um, that Alex shared that um, will light something up for you and, and help you with your label. Or even, I know some of our listeners are DIY musicians and are kind of like running their own mini record label with them as the only artist. That's how I started out and that's a really cool process and maybe one day you bring in another band and then you grow into this, you know, big record label collective or whatever. However you go about doing it, um, it'll be great. Please uh, reach out. You know, you can you can leave a comment wherever you listen or watch this or, uh, or you can email me directly, podcast at otherrecordlabels.com. I would love to hear from you. Like I mentioned at the kickoff uh, in the open about our record label toolkit, this sucker gets downloaded like like uh, over a hundred times a week, which is incredible. That means that over a hundred people a week are uh, need help with their record label or are thinking of starting a record label. That's so cool. You can get one for free at otherrecordlabels.com/toolkit. Thanks for listening. <laughs>